So we are sitting with Matt Rivers. Some of the viewers will remember you, but uh, for the ones that don't, what years were you here at KSAT? So I was in KSAT 12 from 2011 to 2013. So generally I worked, I was lucky enough to work Monday through Fridays when I was here. Um, and I did a lot of crime reporting, but also some investigative stuff that uh, I look back on really fondly. And I want to talk about some of the favorite stories that maybe you covered yeah. here, but first let people know who maybe have not followed your career. Where yeah. did you go after KSAT and where are you now? So after KSAT, I spent two years in Philadelphia, but then I took a job uh, as an international correspondent with CNN. Uh, so I went from Philadelphia to Beijing, China. Uh, so I was there for four years covering mainly China-related content for CNN's international channel, also doing some stuff for the CNN US channel, but also you know, traveling all around the region. So Myanmar, Indonesia, Japan, South Korea, doing breaking news, things like North Korea launching missiles, uh, things like tsunamis and earthquakes in Indonesia, things like uh, refugee crises in, in Myanmar, uh, and, and uh, some genocide there that was taking place. So the career in China really took me all around Asia. Um, and now I am set to move to Mexico City, where I'm going to be uh, based for the next three years at least, hopefully. Um, and I'll be doing stuff in Mexico, but all around Central and South America as well, both for CNN International Channel and also on the CNN US channel. Um, so back to your time in China, what are you going to miss from living in China? The thing I miss about living in China is just how different it is from the US. And just in terms of the language, the way of life, uh, and also the people and the friends that, that we made there. You know, my colleagues in, in the CNN office I grew quite close to, my neighbors uh, in the little neighborhoods that I lived in in Beijing. And also just being on the other side of the world is, is, is fascinating. I mean, when you live in Beijing, you're a three hour flight from Tokyo. And when you live in Beijing, you're a four and a half hour flight to Hanoi, Vietnam. And being able to go and see these places that if you were living in the US, you would need to take three weeks off and spend however many dollars on a plane ticket. That, you know, and when you're living in Beijing, not only are you living in a place where you can get to the Great Wall of China in an hour, which we did a number of times, but you're also going to all of these places that you know, someone like a kid from New Jersey, like myself, never really anticipated that I'd be doing on a regular basis. And that is an experience that my wife and I will never forget. I believe it. How about what you're not gonna miss? <laughs> I'm not gonna miss the time zone difference. So it's Beijing is either 12 or 13 hours ahead of the US, depending on the day. So like if you wanna watch uh, Monday Night Football, for example, you have to get up on a Tuesday morning and try and watch that at work without your boss yelling at you. So I will not miss the time zone difference. Um, that's certainly one thing. And, and just being away from family. I mean, it's a 13 and a half hour roughly flight from uh, Beijing to New York City, where most of my family is. Uh, and then if you were coming to San Antonio, it would be a layover and then another flight from New York to San Antonio. So I won't miss being so far away from family and kind of feeling connected to people's lives here, even though we have FaceTime and Facebook and Twitter and whatever. Um, when you're on the other side of the world, it can feel a bit far away sometimes. How about what are you most looking forward to, not only professionally but personally, about living in Mexico? I love Mexican food, so that's a start. Um, I'm really excited about that. Um, I think Mexico City is a lot closer to home. It's in the right time zone, for example, so I'll be able to, I guess football is a bit of a theme, but I'll be able to watch football at the right time. Um, but so personally, I think it's going to be a really dynamic city. I think uh, my wife and I are really excited to explore a place that we haven't been before. We've both been to other parts of Mexico, but never Mexico City. So we're really excited about that. But professionally, it's a new challenge for me. Um, it's, it's going to be covering a really dynamic region that is really relevant to the United States, given the conversations here about immigration, uh, given conversations here about the drug trade. Uh, it's going to be really fascinating to be a part of that. But then also all the news that is coming out of Central and South America, all the news that has come out of you know, the Amazon rainforest and what we've seen there and, and major discussions about climate change, what we've seen going on in Venezuela uh, with the instability under the Maduro regime, um, you know, the, the migrant trains that have come up from Honduras and, and Guatemala coming all the way up and, and you know, how that plays into the immigration conversation in the U.S. I mean, there is such a wealth of 
stories for a journalist to cover in this part of the world that sometimes I think in the U.S. gets undercovered, at least from people based in Central and South America. And that's what I hope we can bring to the region, um, you know, is, is someone who's based there, who's really interested in those stories, and who, who says to Americans and American audiences, look, this is why I think you should care about this. Um, here's what's happening, and, and hopefully we can bring that to people in a really compelling way. What is, what is it like to work for CNN? Do they, you know your job, I mean, do you know your assignment the day of, far in advance? You know, they might tell you yeah. the, the next minute they need you somewhere? Or how yeah, it it's really interesting. It, it's very different, you know, at KSAT 12, you know, we have these, these shows that, you know, you know, they're scheduled every day, this time, this time, this time. And as a reporter, generally you're working a shift. So when I was here, generally I would work either the day shift or the night shift, and I would report either into the 5 and 6 p.m. shows, or I'd be on the night beat or, or whatever. And it was more of a, a schedule five, day, five days a week. You were doing a story every single day. For CNN, we have 24 hours of news a day, but we have a lot more to cover worldwide. And so if there's not a ton going on in Mexico City, but... President Trump talks about a new trade war with China, for example. Well, China's going to be a lot busier that day than Mexico City will, and so perhaps you'll have a slower day. But when the president talks about, let's say, the Mexican president, uh, for example, or talks about immigration, you're going to be very busy. And because it's 24 hours of news, you might do 15 live shots in a day. You might be you know, constantly talking about similar things across a very long shift. And you might not get a lot of heads up you know, when that happens. Breaking news is kind of CNN's specialty. And so if, for example, there seems like there's a coup imminent in Venezuela, for example, which is what we've seen in the past year or so, you know, it wouldn't be unusual at all for an editor to call me and say, okay, get your, we have these things called go bags where we're always required to have about seven days of clothes and a suitcase. Go home, get your go bag, go to the airport. I will book a flight for you and tell you what flight you're on when you're at the airport. No, we don't know when you're gonna come home. So get ready for whatever might come. And then the next thing you know, you were, you were having dinner with your wife. And the next thing you're hauling, uh, I'm going to use a curse word, but. Um, <laughs> going really fast. Going really fast to the airport. Uh, and you're in Venezuela, you know, and, and six hours later. And that's part of what I love about the job. You, you know, you miss a little bit of a a stable schedule. You miss being able to look, tell your friends, Saturday night, I will be at that party for your 30th birthday or whatever. Um, you do miss that. You know, My wife definitely gets mad at me sometimes because I have walked out of multiple dinner dates uh, between the two of us. But that's also part of what I love about the job is that it's not predictable. And, and you never know where you're going to end up, what you're doing, who you're going to be there with, who you're going to meet, what experiences you're going to have. You know, someone's paying you to travel around the world. And I don't think, especially in today's media environment, that that's all that common. And so my wife, I'll have to ask her to forgive me for this, but sometimes I will trade a dinner date for being, you know, somewhere that I never would have expected to travel to before and hopefully tell a story that means something when I get there. So where can viewers watch you if they haven't maybe caught up with you so far? They can see you on CNN in yeah, the United so, States. Yeah, I mean, there's always the social media channels. So, so CNN has got a big presence on Facebook and Twitter, of course, and all that. And on Instagram, we do a lot of Instagram stories. Um, and so they can see me there. But then CNN has two channels, the U.S. channel. So if you're sitting at home watching CNN, you know, Anderson Cooper comes on at 8 p.m. Eastern. And sometimes I'm on that show. I'll be on other shows during the day. Um, but... Let's say you travel outside of the United States uh, and you're in your hotel room in Mexico, for example. CNN International is a separate channel um, that has sometimes they what we call simulcast uh, shows from the U.S. So Anderson Cooper show will, will show all around the world uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern or whatever time that equivalent is in the country you're in. But CNN International has its own programming. And so when you leave the country, uh, you'll be able to watch TV that frankly often feels very different than what you'd watch on CNN uh, US and most of the people of, of the hundreds of millions of people that watch CNN around the world only a small fraction of that comes from the United States uh, you know our viewers in Kenya uh, our viewers in Indonesia our viewers in Mongolia our viewers in China you know they'll see uh, sometimes different programming and, and that's by design we want to be an international news network that that does news with an international focus as well as a company that knows that its roots are in the United States the biggest stories in the world often come from the United States 
uh, and, and that r remains our, our big focus, I think. So back to KSAT, your time yeah, here. Yeah. Tell us about what are your, say, your favorite memories, maybe about either a story you covered or just about living in San Antonio. I think so living in San Antonio was fantastic. You know, we, my, my wife and I, we weren't married when we were living here. We genuinely missed the place. Um, it was, neither of us had been here before we moved here. And, you know, you, you come here, and I don't have to tell people watching this, about their own city, but you know, this is a, a dynamic city. It's it's a city that's, you know, has such a unique culture. I think just with so many different cultures kind of combining, with everyone kind of centering on the Spurs. I was not prepared for that, and how obsessed people are with the Spurs when I got down here. You know, going going to the AT and T Center and, and seeing that, and, and I was here during a couple of really deep playoff runs when the Spurs were here, and, and seeing the community center on that, but also just. Going to the west side, or going to the south side, or, or, or you know, going to different parts of, of the community, and kind of feeling how each place has its own kind of vibe, but everyone knows that it's San Antonio, and I, and so we really we lived downtown while we were here, but we tried to go all over the place, and I, I, I really miss that. Uh, I miss breakfast tacos. I'll be able to get some more of those in Mexico City pretty soon, but I do miss barbecue, quality barbecue. You can't get that elsewhere. Um, but professionally, I truly look at these two years as, like, I think really they made me who I am as a journalist. And, I, and I, I know that sounds like a bit cliche, but when I look back at my time here, you know, the people who work at KSAT, you know, I was 22 years old when I came here. And, you know, besides making fun of me for being the kid, you know, they taught me how to do this job. You know, and they taught me what it means to work as a team, and they taught me to work for a news station that I think really values journalism. I think that that's unique um, in a lot of local news stations around the country, the sense of family here, and the sense that people are trying to tell good stories that impact their community. You know, that, that they're not willing, that they are willing to do the investigations that might make some people unhappy, but that, you know, there was always a sense when I was here that, that our responsibility was not to the powers that be. It was to like the mom and dad and the two kids, you know, living in in whatever part of the city who were watching the news to find out what was going on. You know, that's that's who I think KSAT reports for, and that's and I, I really mean that. And I and and I think that, you know, when I look back at my time here, learning what it means to be a part of a team and learning how to do quality journalism with with the viewer first and foremost. That's, that's what I really remember about my time at KSAT. Well, even though you were only here for two years, I think you, you know, you're memorable to viewers, you're memorable I hope to so. those of us I in hope the so. newsroom. I hope so, yeah. We are uh, very proud of you and for the journey that you're Thank taking you. and love to follow along and Thank see you. all the good journalism that you're doing. Well, now, now I'm like a two-hour flight away, so I'll come back and visit again. We'd love to. <laughs> Great. Thank you.